ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣೆ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿದ್ವರ ಓಂ ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕಿ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಹರಿ ದಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಇನ್ ಡೈಲಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ that whatever is possible that i shall speak to you now if you see this topic there are three points are there number is practical application what is practical application second of bhagavad gita so we must do bhagavad gita then only the question of practical application comes and the third is a daily life what is daily life that also we have to know now first of all we'll begin with our daily life what do we do we get up in the morning some people at 5 o'clock some 10 o'clock it depends upon what time you get up but when you get up to wash yourself get ready eat read some newspapers or whatever is that then you go to your office school college it depends upon whatever is your field then in the evening or night again you have to uh, meet your friends or uh, socialization or other meetings are there then come back home eat and sleep and again the same thing every day it goes on now this is called daily life a routine kind of thing but do you know what is there in this daily life we have to live with material things living beings and various circumstances events situations experiences and nobody can escape that and what is life then the life is nothing but perception and our response the continuously experiences are happening whether we like or not whether we are ready or not we have to respond to that now that response is right or wrong good or bad that, that is all a is uh, other subjects different matter but everybody has to respond poor or rich illiterate or literate educated or most powerful person uh, or politically economically or otherwise everybody has to respond to them this is our life to live with things with living beings and with various events experiences that keep on happening and as i said whether we know or we don't know whether we like or not we have to respond to that react to that and what we find a given person himself or herself reacts to these situations at different periods of time in different ways at the same time if different people are given the same problem or same situations their responses are again different someone is very mature someone is very immature someone is very impulsive someone is contemplative and there lies a difference that why that response is there in that way i think 
when knowledge sinks in and it is really absorbed by us, it automatically comes in our life. Then there is no gap. Then the knowledge and practical application, they are not different. Only when our knowledge is there, but it is not assimilated and it has not become part and parcel of our life, then this contradiction remains that I know, but I don't know how to apply. For example, simple. Somebody gives you a glass of water or milk or any juice and you are about to drink and someone says, stop, there is poison in it. What happens? The moment that sentence is heard, that there is poison in it, you don't say, okay, let me taste and see. Whether that man is joking or bluffing or whatever it may be, but you will not drink it. Why? Because even though the sentence heard is there is poison, but the knowledge takes place that it is not juice anymore or milk, it is poison. Not only that, but the next step also that if I drink, I will not here be remain here to drink anymore. That will be the last my drink. <laughs> Isn't it? So even though the sentence is only there is poison, but the knowledge has taken place. Now I have to apply practically. <laughs> Does it take time for me to just leave that glass there only? Or I go on thinking milk is, you know, so much, poison may be little. It is not like sugar or anything that, you know. Huh? So they, even if that man says, you know, no, no, I am only joking. I say, no, 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 you may be joking, but I am choking already. <laughs> don't, don't. Why? Because this is called knowledge and its application immediately, understanding and that action comes into it. Our problem is with respect to other knowledge, it is not as clear as like this. And therefore, even though we hear that there is no happiness in the world of objects, we hear again and again through logic, through scripture, through our own experience, but still we feel maybe there is something in it. If not in this, maybe in that object that is there. That feeling remains there. Swami Ramtirthi used to tell one story. It was very interesting. He said there was a person in a town, small town. People used to say he's mad, little mad. He used to play with children and one day he told the children tomorrow evening the landlord of our town is going to have a lighting and there afterwards sweets will be distributed. Naturally the children went there next evening there and what they found there was no lighting, no crackers and no sweet distribution, nothing was there. So they were disappointed. But what they found, this madman was also standing there. So they asked him, didn't you know that there was no such function here and no sweet distribution? He said, I knew. Then why did you come here? He said, I thought, suppose really he distributes. <laughs> suppose he really distributes. I would miss that, otherwise I didn't want to miss it. So therefore, even though we know it is not there, but somewhere still thought remains, maybe there is something. That means what the knowledge has really not gone deep within. If that knowledge goes deep within, practically it will come in life. Then I say there will not be any such kind of 
contradiction or gap or any anything like that therefore in our daily life when we have to live with things and beings and experiences how to live with them that is what is taught by the bhagavad gita and what is taught that if you understand we will be able to live that and i was very happy that when ajay ji spoke and he said that whatever he has learnt in these four years now oh, that knowledge has come very handy to him in his practical life so the knowledge is meant for practical use if it is not used then what is the use one thing that is said in the bhagavad gita jnatva shastra vidhan uktam karma kartum ihar hasi means having understood what the shastra says the scripture says then bring it in your life and you should act accordingly now the sentence appears very simple but please see its implication why do we suffer in our life there are many causes but one cause is because of our thoughtless action this everybody knows one cause for suffering is thoughtless action why the transformation doesn't come and why we suffer but do you know there is other side of that thoughtless action and do you know what is that action less thought action less thought means what thought is there but no action and the the danger is if we do not act according to our knowledge and understanding slowly that knowledge and understanding will start changing and it will take the color of all our actions only i am not going to describe thoughtless action but this actionless thought also must be understood for example suppose i understand the value of getting up early in the morning and doing my job whatever is whether it is exercise meditation studies or anything then i decide i am going to get up in the morning at 5 o'clock and then i don't get up 5 o'clock i don't get up then first day i feel guilty also oh i had said that i will get up but i did not get up but from tomorrow tomorrow definitely and the next day same thing happens but now next day definite like that one week passes i am not able to get up so then eighth day i say anyway what is the use of getting up early in the morning ah huh? because the birds also get up early in the morning what do they achieve so there is nothing in that you know so slowly how happen happens that my knowledge my understanding my concepts are changing because i am not able to do this buddhi karma anusarini <laughs> then our buddhi becomes according to our karma but actually should karma should be according to buddhi and vivek therefore we must understand this fact so the point is whatever knowledge is assimilated that comes in our nature and it does come in our practical life therefore the most important thing is absorption of knowledge only if you say i have read it i have heard it but that is still the knowledge of the gita and knowledge of shri krishna bhagwan ved vyas or the gurus <laughs> it must become my knowledge i know what is said in gita but it must become my knowledge that our gurudev said beautifully one day somebody told swami ji i have gone through this gita so many times but nothing has happened then swami said let gita go through you <laughs> you have gone through this gita 
that is very good but now let the geeta go through you okay so now this much is introduction now what is the main thing that bhagavad geeta says how to live with things beings and experiences there is only one watch word that is there in the geeta and that is samata equanimity but remember this equanimity has got different nuances and aspects when we talk about equanimity with reference to objects equanimity with reference to living beings and equanimity with reference to our experiences these experiences are our pairs of opposites so we will start first with objects then experiences and then being because that is the most difficult and among beings means i mean human beings people don't know how to live with human beings only that's why they have cats dogs and all that they feel they're more comfortable and anything but with human beings it is problem one man told me that he was of the field of management he said swami ji management is sort managing people and there are two types of people who have difficulties and who are difficult <laughs> and then have, we have to live with them you know sounds like people or people variety of things you know someone says one lady came young lady and she says swami ji i am worried why my mother in law is coming my in laws are coming they are going to stay here i say they are in laws not out laws you say but sometimes they act like that only so i don't know what to do afraid even they have not yet arrived also But before that, with living with people is difficult. We will come to that topic at the end. What is the samata? First, with objects. Our house is there, furniture there, car there, TV there, uh, jewelry is there, uh, and so many things. Things are there. You know. What Gita says? समलोष्टाश्म कांचन इक्वेनिमिटी टूवर्ड्स ए लंप ऑफ क्ले और पीस ऑफ स्टोन और गोल्ड सेम सेम मीन्स वट यू थिंक ऑल आर सेम ओनली दैट इज नॉट कॉल्ड वॉट कैंड ऑफ टीचिंग इज दैट दैट आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज क्ले एंड स्टोन एंड गोल्ड इज ए नो नो दैट्स नॉट वॉट इज ए मीनिंग samata with reference to material object is that all material objects have a place in the scheme of our life and every object has got its importance and every object has got its value you must give due value and respect to everything if i have got 1000 rupees with me so then i must uh, i 1000 rupees exchange value i have got that whatever i can do i can do but when we look at that money or any object our way of looking at it is not that if somebody asks you, is gold more precious than stone or stone so it automatically says gold is more precious but remember if you have to hit somebody it is st- stone is only more important not uh, gold i am not saying you hit somebody with this stone you can build your house with stones and bricks ha huh? not gold and all that if you have to make ornaments they will be of gold but not with other thing so samata means what don't give undue importance to this material objects but at the same time don't say they are not important 
they have got place they have got importance and they have got value so what one thing can do the other thing cannot do and rahim ji said once beautifully rahim ne dekh bade in ko laghu na dijiye dari jahan kaam aave sui kaha kare talwari seeing the big one don't ignore the small because the work job that is done by a needle cannot be done by a sword but that does not mean sword is useless because you can't fight with enemy with needle <laughs> their sword is only required other weapons only required so wherever that place is you give that but we do not look at money or any object that way we see this is a status symbol isn't it this is a sign of prosperity then i am superior to other and this is what it happens and then we value that object more than even the person the person is valued according to what that person has i had read a very interesting story in my childhood that there was a man who was rich but his sister was very poor he used to give parties to so many people but never inviting that girl the sister she was poor but she thought brother's house and i can go she went with her children he insulted her and all that he said, don't you come here again she prayed to goddess by goddess grace she became rich then brother invited her <laughs> she also went for lunch or dinner whatever that party was wearing all ornaments and all and when she saw sat food was served she took out her ornaments and she started feeding those ornaments and that brother came to what are you doing he said you invited them you did not invite me can material object will become more important than even living being this is how we don't know what value you are giving to what that brother was so ashamed of himself at that time you invited the ornaments only so if i am feeding them we must know how to live with material things this is called equanimity all objects are important give due importance and place to them in your life then you will not have problem now second is experiences what are our experiences in the language of gita see these phrases come very often shitoshna sukha dukheshu tatha manap manayo ho equanimity in the pairs of opposites characterized by heat and cold joy and sorrow and honor and dishonor pujya gurudev wrote beautiful commentary and he said when we say heat and cold all these experiences at our body level joy and sorrow experience at the mind level mate honor and dishonor they are our intellectual judgments all these are the pairs of opposites and who is the person who can escape all this even if you are rich or poor educated uneducated anyone heat and cold will be there but heat and cold is only symbolic physical is sometimes we are enjoying good health sometimes very unwell joy and sorrow who is free from that and honor and dishonor also 
how to have that equanimity. Remember, here the equanimity is freedom from our personal likes and dislikes. If you need neutralize our likes and dislikes, then we can remain same in opposites. Suppose already I say that this is what I want and I cannot accept the other thing. This is what I like and other I don't like. Then the thing of like comes, I will be elated. And the thing of dislike comes, I will be dejected. Now, keeping our likes and dislikes strong in mind, strong in mind, and then want to remain same in joy and sorrow, it is not possible. Therefore, neutralize that raga dvesh. Every time, all the situation cannot remain the same. Because the change is a changeless law of this world. If we accept one thing, we should be ready to accept the other also. Or reject both. Either accept both or reject both. Equanimity of mind. That maturity must be there. Because today is one thing, tomorrow is another thing. In Sanskrit it said, Agate swagatam kuryad gachantam nanivarayat. When something comes, welcome it. And something goes, don't stop it. This is called equanimity of mind. Now this can be practiced in many ways. A devotee would say, whatever happens in my life, it is that is Bhagwan's will, God's will. So he sees everything is God's will, and then he is, he is at peace. Other person says, whatever I get in my life is all result of my own karmas only earlier. This is called according to karma theory. <laughs> Then his mind is at peace. A Jnana Yogi says, how you can maintain your equanimity of mind depends upon what you are upbringing also. Man of knowledge says, this is what all that happens, only all appearances. The real thing is only the self. I abide in that. And all things that come and go, I accept as it is. But samatha has to be there. If that is not there, one minute you are elated, another minute deflated. Kshane rushta, kshane trushtaha. One moment angry, the second moment very happy. Then, then again something happened. Then, and that's why every time we, you meet people, you know, you have to ask, how are you? So why should you ask every time? When, and you know, even though it is a pleasantry, you know, to me, when you meet and uh, how are you, you don't have to tell your biography or any uh, kind of all that. But why that every time I have to ask? And that man also does not, I told you in the morning, you know, I am fine. Why you are asking again? Well, that was in the morning, it is afternoon now. <laughs> it changes. How much will be swinging like that? That's Samatha. Now we come to the last point. Hmm. You see, every topic, actually every aspect is such, you know, it can be elaborated upon and all that. But you all are uh, students of Bhagavad Gita, you have been studying it. So the, I was not, I'm telling you something new or anything like that. Or what is said in the Gita, that only I'm saying. I'm sharing only my understanding. Now living with people. Living with people, they are also equanimity. Now, how is that? Bhagavad Gita only said, Suhran Mitra Yudasina Madhyastha Dvesha Bandhushu Sadhushva Picha Papeshu Sama Buddhi Vishishyate. This is the shloka in the sixth chapter. The people are categorized in this way. See, we live with people. Remember, Different people have got different relationship with us 
and when we also have got different relationship with them so someone is surat surat means our well wisher surat other is mitra friend very intimate friend he can be or whatever is that friend but he is more than well wisher he is with us in joy sorrow everything surun mitra ari someone is positive enemy surun mitra ari fourth is udasin udasin means neutral indifferent you he doesn't take anybody's side also madhyastha one is in the middle well wisher of both the parties he is called madhyastha so suppose i have got some conflict with the other person i can that mediator he is a friend of both so he'll say okay you know i will try to resolve all your conflict the udasin would say i don't want to interfere anywhere i don't take anybody's side na kasyachit paksham bhajate madhyastha surun mitra udasin madhya dvesha dvesha is a very peculiar thing for no reason we don't like that person Uh, you know, I don't know why. Some person, you know, uh, we just like. You know, even first time we meet, you know, just we like the other person. Bandhu, bandhu means priya. Bandhu means relation also. So priya also. You know, we meet first time. We live only for short while together, but you know, we feel very deeply. and the other person we don't like even we try our best to like that person but nothing happens <coughs> dvesha bandhu sadhu shu samal sadhu sadhu means what they help everybody sadhu parakaryam sadhnoti ever ready to help anybody they are good hearted people righteous virtuous they are sadhu and papeshu means unrighteous all the time wicked thoughts only come to their mind now all these people are there now remember some person may be friendly to me but the same person may be inimical to someone else also even i may be friendly to somebody but to someone i may be neutral but now taking myself to be the point with this type of people i have to live now they may be very near dear ones relatives or even others little far off other friends and all that and remember living with near and dear one only is difficult when i read the jesus christ said love thy neighbor i said what is the limited vision what is he is saying love thy neighbor he should, should say love all beings but then i realized what he said was correct because loving all beings is easy only loving neighbor is difficult <laughs> the one is very close ha huh? the one is very close uh, that's only difficult suppose somebody comes and tells me swami a man in timbuktu was criticizing you it affect it doesn't affect me at all i don't know where is timbuktu i don't know whether it is there or not there first i got a doubt whether such a place is there or not and even if it is there the who is that man or if he says what different does it mean but if someone comes and tells you that swami ji that you were a disciple whom you taught what is telling about you what 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 is he telling tell tell why <laughs> <laughs> because the clo- closer one kaha kim karma iti avyaprata buddhi learn to accept that every individual as that individual is don't go on breaking your head why he is like that why she is not like that and why that person is like that. don't go on comparing and all that how it is i'll tell you an example suppose you go to a garden and you see different trees and flowers and fruits and all that you accept them as they are or not huh you don't say the apple should be like mango and mango should be like orange you accept the mango as mango orange or the orange 
lemon as lemon. You don't say lemon and what sour, it should be like sweet. You know? yeah? That is wrong thing. Vegetables, that bitter good is bitter and that is what the beauty of that is there only. All the vegetables and all. Or you go to a zoo or safari and when you see all different animals, you enjoy seeing all of them, isn't it? And you never say that lion should be like tiger or tiger should be like deer. No. If you see a lion, uh, you will not like it. Lion should be like a lion only. How you accept them as they are? But at the same time, you know, you can go near a deer, but you can't go near a tiger and play and all that. A snake is snake. Huh? No need of hating anyone. But we accept. Now you know, fire is hot. We don't complain why fire is hot. Because it is fire. But we use it also. So if we have to live with different people, we will have to understand who is the person who is inimical to me or who is friendly to me and who, who is what? I understand that. But I don't go on saying he is good man, he is bad man, or why he is like that, why he is not like that. No such thing. But at the same time, I go on changing my way of dealing with it. Suppose I know such a certain person is a dependable person. Then you depend on him, give some job to him. If you know that this person will never do that job and nor ever undependable, then why do you give that work to him? But there are many people, they, they, they are like that only. They will give that job to that person, they know he will not do. And when that person does not do it, he is frustrating. And I knew that he will not do. So if you knew that he will not, why did you give that? What to do? That is my nature also, you know. That I again give. But it is your mistake. We go on saying, how can that man be so rude? But he has shown how he can be rude. <laughs> But how can you say such thing to me? He said, I already said. <laughs> and again, if you want to know how I can say, I will tell you. You see, there is no point in constantly complaining about it. The first is accept. Huh? First is accept. Second, if you are related to that, and if it is necessary for you to say something and other, nobody says that you should not uh, try to advise or teach or this or that. But anadhikar you should not do. Unauthorized you should not do it. Suppose I go to somebody's house and the servant has not behaved properly, I cannot dismiss that servant from that job. No? How can I get angry with that servant in somebody's house? I can only report to that person says your servant was not all right, you know. And interestingly, interestingly, in one house, you know, it was written, accept me as I am, don't try to change me. <laughs> See, that means what? We want to be accepted by other person as we are. But we can't accept the other person either. Why? Shanti. I remember one incident from a uh, life of Socrates. It is said his wife was a very short-tempered, angry person and she never understood his greatness. She used to scold and all that. So one day, even the company of people, she came and abused him, left and right, scolding and horrible words and all that. And he was calm and quiet. As though that was not enough, she went and brought one bucket of water and poured on him again. And still he was calm. So somebody asked him, your wife behaved like that and you did not say anything. He smiled and he said, nature's law, what that? 
देर इज शावर आफ्टर थंडर सो इसे सो दैट्स वॉट यू नो दैट डू यू कंप्लेन इफ देर इज अ शावर आफ्टर थंडर now he knows whatever is her nature or he will the kid she doesn't understand her no what can you do kab tak fight karte rahenge you can't count by calm and quiet so when we live with people samabuddhi here the samabuddhi is the acceptance of all that their equanimity with the balance of mind there other look at things as they are material things understand their value and deal with them this is our practical life every day we have to live what else is our life living with only things beings and people people and everywhere one thing is same sama samatvam yoga uchchate but the samata has got different you know shades of meaning and light in short time i try to you know explain with some examples and all that but i know this is not enough i have to really study uh, deeply and then again and again you have to reflect on that then it will come that's all i have to say about the practical application of the gita in daily life so what is our daily life i pointed out what is the gita's teaching main thing only just one thing i told and how to apply so i have completed my topic thank you <laughs> now just few minutes if you have got any question i will answer but i will answer to my satisfaction <laughs> because i don't know whether you will be satisfied or not but uh, yes so you beautifully explained uh, the samata aspect with two things being experiences uh it's wonderful but it sounds like a zero sum game because it neutralizes everything is it not possible to maximize the joy and neutralize the pains so one can retain the joy uh, of things experiences or beings you like uh, but not be affected by the negativity uh, is is it possible to get the mind in that kind of state then it's always a win win see i told you how to live with things being sent experiences right now when we talk sometimes samata or equanimity many people feel that it is very kind of neutral kind of state and there is so there is no joy in it and all that but that is not the truth actually this samata is an expression of purnata fulfillment otherwise it is not possible the person who is unhappy it will not be i will give an example when you are hungry at that time you know you think of food and i like this food i don't like that and all that you will say but when your stomach is full then whatever food is brought or taken away it makes no difference but that does not mean you are unhappy uh, if laddu brought or was taken away <laughs> and ice cream was brought and given and all but at that time because the fullness of stomach therefore you are equanimous in all that so this samata is not a very neutral kind of said it is full of joy that geeta says yasmi sito na dukhe na guru na api vicharyate it is such positive state of bliss that even big sorrows cannot disturb or shake that person then otherwise samta cannot come if you are not happy you know inside anyone else yes she wants to ask my question is about 
translation of knowledge into action. The big gap between knowing and doing is, uh, is a question of application and how, See, how best one can try to do that. Yes. The best way is remain steadfast in the study class of Bhagavad Gita. See the example I will give. This is, suppose you are given a cup of tea and there is sugar in it and still the tea is tasting little bitter. So what a peculiar situation is that, that sugar is there and tea is not sweet. How can that be? The only one reason can be either you have not put sufficient sugar or you have not stirred it properly and dissolved it. So it is only at the bottom. So if the sugar is only at the bottom, it will not taste sweet. That's why in the beginning itself I said, if our knowledge is really assimilated and absorbed, it will come in our life automatically. That's why now why this uh, gap is seen, because now we have put that knowledge, but that still knowledge has not become one with our nature, with our personality. It is still the knowledge of the scripture and the teacher. It must become our own. And therefore, again and again, again and again, we have to do that study. There is no other way. And when you go on doing it again and again, it will be dissolved. And that sweetness will come. So that's the only continuous satsang is the only remedy. <laughs> yes. Swamiji, thank you for your discourse. It was very enlightening. I did have one question, which is uh, the difference between striving and acceptance. Um, I am not sure just when I should be striving, what I should be striving for, and what I should be accepting in myself and in life. Okay. Strive to accept. <laughs> anyway, but I will tell you. I will tell you how it is. Now, please know, in every aspect of our life, every action, every project, everything, whatever work we do, there are two aspects. One is that we have to fulfill, we have to do something. And second is we have to allow it to happen. Their acceptance it, allow it to happen. Uh, like what, you see, when you are hungry or whatever that, so cooking that food, eating that food, that is your job. But afterward, digestion is whose job? You don't worry about it, isn't it? Because that is nature has to take charge of it. No person says, now I am sitting digesting, digesting, don't disturb me or anything. You accept it, it's a natural thing. Or gardening or anywhere also. You, uh, farming, gardening, agriculture, everywhere. See, your job is to prepare the soil and you get the right seed, the right time, you sow it, on. then allow it to happen. And then what happens? You have to accept it. Now here, also every work it is like that, their vivek has to be there. Ki where I have to work and where I have to allow it to happen. Then. Now, I can teach, but whether the student understands or not, you know, how much you know you can do? You cannot go, enter into everybody's mind there like that. So there are certain things, by practice, you will come to know that here is a need of striving, and here is that what you have to accept. So that way, where we have to accept, where we have to just strive, that once you know, like I gave some examples, like that in different situations, you know, that you will know. Uh, like for example, I, I want to win the election. Want to become example. Now, if I want to election, whatever this process, I have to go through campaigning, this, that, that, that. But that is in my hand. 
but voting or not voting or the people have to select me and they they don't think anything in me so they are not going to vote for me so they say i have done now my job everything now whatever the result comes i accept everywhere whether it is student life whichever life that all and by practice and by this satsang vivek will come it will come yes guru ji many a times uh, people do things for others with great expectations and when it's not reciprocated they get very disappointed what do you think and how does one cope up with such kind of a situation sir right this is a big problem with us that we have expectations from others and uh, then we get disappointed also the simple thing is don't expect they say no this is very impractical uh, what you call advice it, it, it cannot be so where we are living there will be expectation now i will say there are two three points one is your expectation should be right expectation not wrong expectation what is the wrong expectation if you expect sweetness from salt it is wrong expectation but if you expect sweetness from su- sugar you will not be disappointed that's why i gave one example when you know a person is undependable and <laughs> then you expect that person to do the certain thing so your expectation itself is wrong when you know that you will be disappointed so therefore you have to understand the natures that person's nature or any any nature is like this so the once you know that the ability of that other person then you expect only that much see a child how much you will expect how much load that child can lift and all that or <laughs> that much only weight you will give in the hands of that child how much money that child can handle only that much money you will give so while expecting we must be reasonable ki huh? what are we expecting now you may be having two sons the one may be very bright brilliant and other may be bright brilliant but you know little playful so you, you can't expect the same thing and one mind may be you know, to given to science other person is sports or arts and all that but you cannot say that how that not the same way you have to wrong expectation or especially reasonable suppose somebody is a physically challenged person and when they have got a running race and all that you don't expect the same way as in a healthy man running so what i will say when you expect please think that your expectation is reasonable or not right or not that you see and with that you give then i tell you mostly 90% you will not be disappointed but suppose in spite of all that do not have what call fulfillment on that expectation i may expect but don't insist on that and the best way of doing that also please think do you have got some expectation from yourself also or not are you able to fulfill all of it uh, then why are we so harsh or hard towards others be more kind to them also uh, i have got also my expectation i tell you that i should be like this this uh, and i am not so then if i cannot fulfill my own expectation from myself uh, be kind you know accept kar lo koi baat nahi you expect but be reasonable and right expectation and also accept also if, if it is fulfilled or not fulfilled uh, then you will have no problem it is 12:30 uh, any one more question last there are now three four hands are going up so i will give chance to this sir who has not and one more that's our last
Um, Swami ji, you told us to accept people for what they are. Yeah. But how do you get others to accept you for what you are? Why do we have to so many times put on appearances to make people accept us? And if we if we behave the way we are, generally people don't tend. I mean, it's happened to me. That's why. <laughs> now you know. That reminds me of something. You know, in a different context. One lady went to a bookstall. There are so many books were on self improvement. Then she asked, "Don't you have anything improving others?" You know? <laughs> Now you say, "I have to learn how to accept. Or how can I make other people to accept me?" Huh? You can't force everybody else. So only. if you start accepting as people they are i tell you there is a law of echoing works then there is every chance other person also will accept it is possible ha huh? if we want our child or to a son daughter to to listen to us first we must listen to them if you listen to them they will also listen to there will be reciprocation but if i only go and say something it will not work so they were start from yourself i accept the beginning that person may not have but slowly that person say oh oh when he doesn't do that like that then why should i he will change it he will also accept so one someone had raised that hand that side ha huh. i think that's the last one ha huh. you said that uh, when the other person is expecting a lot of things from us then in that situation how you'll cope up we should not expect it's fine but like you know if somebody is expecting a lot from you and you're not being able to perform it then in that case what will you do right you see when the other man expects something from you you also know your limitations and your abilities so from the beginning itself you tell him ha huh? that whether you will be able to do that or not you see i also say as a head of the mission so many things come to you constantly you know then if i am able to do i tell that person yes i will do this if i am not able to i tell that person in the beginning itself you know he say because of these these reasons i will not be able to do so don't keep him in suspense and all that you know suppose he is writing say please please send me an article uh, for our souvenir and you know that you are not going to do it for whatever reason inform him that please don't wait you know, i will not be able to do it. or if you can do it just send it immediately so if someone else is expecting something from me then i must know whether i will be able to do that or not and be frank and truthful don't throw with a goody goody yes 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 i'm telling yes to everybody and now nothing and then everybody is angry uh, what is the use of that be truthful and honest they will appreciate that ha huh. but sometimes that also happens they never openly tell what they expect only mentally i never expected you said how do i know that so you tell how do i know unless you tell me therefore if you wanted something you should have told me uh, I, i am not antaryami parmatma knowing you or what is happening in your mind and all that i can't read your mind so if you want something tell me i want this <laughs> uh, you tell i am dull witted person you know i want only specifically ha uh, it is all it all comes by practice uh, the more and more you really will do it you know you will learn from your own experiences also then the experience is the best teacher then